If anybody's curious, this mug was made by Meha Ceramics, and it's my favorite mug in the entire world. So, um, go check out her Etsy, Meha Ceramics, if you like this kind of thing. It's M-E-H-A Ceramics, and she's on Etsy and Instagram, and she's a wonderful person. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you don't hate your Mondays. <laughs> well, we had somebody fly out. Um, oops. You know what? You're always talking. Well, we'll, we'll, I'm going to save, I'm going to save that one. Loud mouth, but also accurate. So we're going to actually talk slightly about two cards. Um, yeah, I hope you guys don't hate your Mondays because you know what? Like, it's just an arbitrary way of organizing time. You know, every day is a new day. Like the whole week, month, year thing. It's like, it's helpful in certain capacities, but in terms of your own progress, you know, and in terms of, where you're at in life, the days, the weeks, the months, like thinking about them, you know, constantly and where like comparing yourself to other people is just like a no go. Every day is your fresh opportunity to make those micro adjustments that today spiral into something huge in a year. That's the thing I think a lot of people kind of miss when it comes to you know, setting about the work of, of aiming towards their highest and best. It's like, it seems like your highest and best is so far from you. Cause you know who you are, you know what you've done, you know, like every little thing you've thought, you know, that you're nowhere near what your potential is, you know, and that can be overwhelming. But when you get like a good, clear idea of what at least where, from where you're sitting right now, what is the highest idealized version of yourself? Like, and you just say, what does that person do? And you could get the full picture. And it's like, okay, what could I do today that looks anything like that? And even if it's one thing, I think that's how you make your way towards your highest self. Because I don't know, like, I don't think the point is to live on this dimension perfectly and idealized. I think maybe in another dimension, we experience our idealized states in a full way, kind of like Plato's, you know, the cave, you know, where the idea is, is that what we see in this reality is merely shadows of what actually exists, you know? So perhaps, you know, we come to this realm to go through not being ideal, go through every problem that there is for human beings or let's just say life forms of a nature like ours, you know, and perhaps it's different in other parts of our cosmos. But, you know, from where I'm sitting, it just seems like everyone has these universal issues to deal with. And if we recognize that we're not separate from any level of both sides of the spectrum, like we're not separate from the lowest of the low that human life can express. And we're not separate from the highest of the high. So that simply means all we need to do is put our focus and our attention on the direction we want to go and accept that the rest is a part of us. And then we have this really like, I feel easy relationship to what happens around us. Cause you, you, you remember, you come back to center and you're like, God damn, the nasty exists for us to know that that's not what we want. That's it. And we wouldn't understand the levels, the highs, the, the fluctuating, you know, positive expression if we couldn't con conceive how bad we can make things. And right now I, I tend to subscribe to the idea that we're in a phase of the world called the Kali Yuga. And it's like, the darkest place that humans get to. It's like the most disordered, the most chaotic, the most like out of alignment with our true selves. And, you know, we're going through a lot of stuff right now. And I think 
it's a it's a kind of jumble of emotions and feelings getting woken up to the darkness of what we are. And that's important, I feel. We cannot separate ourselves from that which we hate. We can't. It's everything's like this inner, it's an inner expression first, you know? And so when we see stuff on the outside that we hate, it's because we hate ourselves. And I mean that in a macro and micro sense, you know, macro in that we see the capacity for, for negativity and what we consider evil in humans. And we hate that. But it's in us and on a deep, deep, deep intrinsic level, we know we're not separate from the rest of our species. So we have to accept this as a part of ourselves, but we don't want to. And this is the ultimate shadow demon in all of humans. We can't accept that we're the demon. We're the chaos monster. We're the one that instigates the trouble in our own experience, the trouble in our world. And all, the only way to like circumnavigate that is to bring more awareness and focus on the direction we want to go. So, we'll die tribe to start your morning off. Woo! Um, but yeah, that's just something that's been on my heart recently. Um, and I don't know. Just feels really, 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 I don't even know the word. Can't vocalize it, but maybe necessary, needed, I don't know, it's, it's the vibe, so, but like, what's the mood, okay, what's, what's, uh, what's, what's old lady tarot have to say about this, oh, interesting, we have pulled the nine of swords, so, like, which this is this is really interesting on two levels to me. Number one, because we pulled a considered negative card last week, five of cups. There's a there's a natural and kind of typical like negative association with five of cups. It's like loss and you know just ugh, sadness, etc. Like just a real negative kind of experience, like conflict and all that. The Nine of Swords, that's, a, that's a, another typically negative kind of uh, traditionally interpreted card. I love this card. I love all the negative cards. That's, again, because I think, um, I don't know. And so this is why it's interesting on another level for me personally, is simply because, like, I have been very, very much getting the message that it's like, dude, like, right now, shadow work is kind of like a main focus for me in my life. And I've been continuously getting those signs about, you know, sharing kind of in depth, like how this process works even more. And I think it's because, you know, we're in the dark night of the soul for humanity in, in, a, in a time sense, you know, in a phase or cyclical sense. And this means that we all have a lot of personal shadow work to be doing. So it's, it's pretty interesting to me that like, you know, as I've decided to dedicate to doing these Monday morning things, some traditionally negative cards have been coming up the first two times. I think that's interesting. I just think it's a sign of where we're all at right now. Shadow work is like one of the most potent tools I think I've ever utilized. And it's about coming into an accepting relationship with that which you actually are. Okay. And in the nine of swords, Again, I've, I've talked about this a lot. The swords is like the suit of air and that's completely connected to the realm of communication. Like it's, it's ruling our ideas, our thoughts, our beliefs, our words. And I think that's, that's highly key because I believe words to be spells. I mean, every we, I mean, I posted, you know, a quote about that this morning. It's like, you live in the house your words build, you know? Um, we live in a world our our voices sing into existence. Um, and, you know, the nines are all about kind of a review, a looking back. But as you can see from this card, you know, we've got total darkness. This dude is obviously in turmoil over what he's awoken from. So it's like, and it's the nightmare card in, in that traditional kind of sensation. And I still feel that way about this card. Um, 
It's indicating, however, like, you know, the reviewing that you're doing, you're using your mind to go to the past in a negative way. You know, you're, you know, the swords are interesting because they're double-edged. They can build us up and they can cut us down. You know, again, that's more evidence of them being spells. You know, what we say has an impact. We can feel the reverberation, like, you know, kind of infinitely. Because as you, as you make people, like, as you influence people with your words or as you influence reality with your words, there, it just becomes like this uh, trickle out effect. You know, things, things just spread. So it's about like, this card is bringing our awareness to the fact that when we go to the past, thinking about the past consistently in a way that is hurtful to us, we are perpetuating more of what is hurt, what was hurtful in the past in the present, and we're seeding that for our future. You know, what we what we ought to do is consider our history simply a teaching utensil. Like it's 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 material for us to evaluate what we could do differently. There's not there should be no going to the past and hurting your feelings all over again. Like that has got to be like it's a, it should be a canceled program. We need to uninstall that fucking program. That program that says, when I go back and witness old pain, I need to feel as if it's happening again. And the funny thing is, though, like, our hypothalamus doesn't actually know the difference between a present, past, and future threat. That's why it's pretty important that we understand these concepts about reviewing our past and what its effect on our future actually is, you know, because it's, it's a pretty ingrained program to think about our past negatively, you know, any negative situation that happens, continue to run it in, in the most negative sense. Shadow work is all about looking at the truth, the truth of who you are, the truth of what has happened and seeing a good thing in that. It's not about, you don't have to necessarily change the truth, change the story. You really don't. You need to at least, though, change your thinking about it. And for me, one of the most powerful spells that has enabled me to do this with my life, because I've had, you know, people ask me, like, you know, how do you, how do you actually let go of your feelings about the past? And for me, I had to install a new program, okay? Sometimes an installation is really messy. You know, it defrags or you, you need to defrag afterwards because it leaves behind all these parts. Sorry about the computer metaphor, but it's like, it just seems like the easiest to relate to the brain. Um, so you've got to come in and install some like cleanup software, right? You've got to put something in that gives it more, you know, of a full effect, so for me, in order for me to be able to start choosing how I saw past experiences, I had to accept a new belief. I had to program something into me. And for me, it was things happen for me. Things do not happen to me. That for me was the survivor versus victim switch for me. So there was no longer the temptation to ever see myself as a victim because I had switched a belief that doesn't allow, it doesn't support, it doesn't have room for me being the victim. It never does. That's what that, that, that program runs for me. So that in that sense, that's the only way in which we get to have different emotions. We have to hold different beliefs that inspire different kinds of thoughts because like I said, the way we think about it changes what we experience. And that way we get a different emotional ex response because we're thinking about things differently. We hold different beliefs that don't allow us to go back and just fucking slit our wrists over what has already transpired. We can't control that. We control our present moment, you know, and it's fine to review the past, you know, but we need to switch this. This is like the shadow expression of going over the past. This is going over the past, beating yourself over the head over mistakes or failed, uh, relationships or missed opportunities, etc. This is saying like that kind of review keeps you in the dark and it, and it breeds more of the energy, the, the vibration that 
attracted that experience in the first place. That experience happened for you so you would learn a lesson, not so that you would go back to it and rehash all the details and re-hurt yourself all over again. This is something that I do like think is really important because we choose our emotional responses by choosing to allow what we believe to stay there. You know, if you are getting your feelings hurt about something and it's really dragging you down, my my chaos witch fucking ass has this word of wisdom to say to you. Can you change the belief that gets your feelings hurt? If you can't, like, have you tried? That's what deconditioning is. This is how we deprogram our mind. We take the things, the things that are the most uncomfortable to us, and we look at them right in the face, and we say, what do you have to teach me? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, eyes wide open. I'm not going to shrink away. I'm not going to wish you weren't here. I'm not going to ask for this anxiety that I feel right now to go away. I'm going to ask What do you have for me in this moment? What is here? That's how we address the things that are the hardest for us to reconcile because we're holding a different belief than we're acting out, you know, and or or that we're speaking. We're trying to get in alignment with something and, you know, but the inside of us is holding on to these old beliefs that continue to to keep us in the dark. So this card is really, really calling us to review how you've reviewed the past. You know, use your mind to kind of comb through and and see like where were there, where were there perspective shifts available? And can you now with this awareness, with this whole like, hey, This understanding that if I do not choose to see my past pain as stepping stones to where I'm meant to be, then it only has the, the, it only is wasted time. It's, it's hurt for no reason. We must give things a reason. Do you like, this is what gives us meaning. We choose to give ourselves meaning. So if you can look back, what most of us end up doing is we either internalize or perpetuate our pain. So we go back to the past and we relive it. If you're an internalizer like I used to be, I'd go to the past and I would relive it and I would feel all the pain and I would activate my pain body and I would sit in it and I would stew in it and I would be an internal mess just on the outside, much quieter, less like, you know, communicative with the people around me, the people who cared about me, the people in my community. Um, and just, just completely in my own shit and, and just killing myself slowly. You know, I feel at that point I was like, I don't, I I think this is a silly judgment term, but I was the dumbest I had ever been because I could not think clearly based on how much pain I was constantly reliving and just hanging out in the vibrational state of, and it was all stuff from the past. It was stuff from my childhood unresolved. I was literally just going and looking at it, you know, just like fixating on it. That Where our attention goes, energy flows. And I was basically asking the flow of the universe to create a stagnated, painful life experience for me where I felt the need to constantly protect. I gained like the most weight I ever gained in that period of time. I was just like, like, tr- like uh, so easily emotionally triggered. You know, like I said, internally a mess, the most anxiety, the most depression. And it's just because I was perpetuating those states of pain um, in my present moment. And creating that situation all over again. And it started to, what starts as energy eventually gets denser and it becomes your physical form. It becomes the way the world has populated around you. It becomes how you feel about your life. So in order to shift that, you must shift your perspective. You got to find what beliefs will work for you. I can't do this work for everybody. All I can do is show you guys what I did, tell you the spells that have worked for me, tell you like, you know, how I did it. But I'm a specific type of person. I'm not special. I'm just like 
I'm a Virgo. I'm, you know, born in a certain time. I'm this, I'm that. All these things contribute to how I am and how I work. This is why I constantly stress for all of you guys to do the work of knowing yourself because, you know, all your questions, they're answered by you. You, the highest idealized, like, future version of yourself. And honestly, dude, like I see you, Chris, and I just want to say, like, I can't say that. All I can say is that I am in more communication with my highest self than I think the average bear is. That's it. It's not special. Everybody can do it. We just have to look that direction. You have to be told, first of all, that there is, like, I, I love Plato simply for the cave. Like, if nothing else, the cave is transformative ideology, like, uh, in concept terms. It's not an ideology. Um, but, like, the idea that there's outside of this realm, this, this fully evolved version of you. To me, the fact that we go through evolution, you know, like our DNA has the blueprint. It has the ability to make exactly what we are, right? So if we are a part of a continuum that continuously is, you know, dies and is reborn as these new versions of humans, because we've watched traits change through our DNA over time, you know, we're evolving towards something. There has to be a bigger blueprint. So that's where I get the idea of everyone having a highest self, an idealized self, the perfected, evolved self that's outside of this realm, but that we can look towards and we can learn about and we can have relationship with, we can be given information by, but it's, it's not separate from us. And I think that's the most important thing to understand. You know, one of my favorite psychologists has a new book and it's just like one of the, the principles in that book is like to treat yourself like someone that matters Someone that you care about deeply. And that's kind of part and parcel, I think, to discovering the highest self. You have to understand that you are someone who deeply and intrinsically matters. And you becoming what you are meant to evolve up to is in service of everyone. And that's where this dude comes in, the king of pentacles. This is about gaining as much like mastery of the physical realm as we can, because when we do that, everyone else improves. The whole world shifts in kind of like vibratory echoing, you know, it's like sympathetic vibrations, you know, my tagline for this card will forever be when I come up, everyone comes up. That's mastery of the physical realm. That's understanding that we create heaven on earth by deciding what we do on earth. You know, heaven's a state of mind, a state of consciousness from my perspective. It's living in an idealized kind of state of mind, like acting as if, you know, the reason why we don't have a more beautiful, cohesive and harmonious society is because we don't believe that we can have that. We don't, you know, we think the world is the way it is and we've got all these hindrances and we, cause we can't linearly see the path out of this situation. We start giving into despair and giving into that, like, give up that nihilistic kind of responsibility shirking perspective where it's just like, this is just the way it is and I can't control it and blah, 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 blah. Remember that like all you do have control over is you, but you are in an entire universe and other universes will respond to you. At least that's how it works in the three dimensional realm, you know, and again, there's a, a, a principle in physics that says items, or items, objects, objects of a higher frequency in train or bring up items, objects, matter of a lower frequency to meet that higher frequency. When you're in the aura of a higher frequency being, you feel recharged, you feel loved, you feel held, you feel supported, you know, and, and that feeling, oh my God, humans only need like this much encouragement, y'all. We only need like this much you're on the right path. Keep doing that. 
or what you're doing right there is not serving you. We only need this much loving encouragement to fucking get there, to get like on the path towards us really owning who we are and knowing who that is and becoming the fullest expression of ourselves. That's the silly thing. And that's the harsh thing for me to understand about our world right now is people are so ready to, to tear each other down and to call each other out. And I mean, I understand why that is. I just, the manner in which we do it, it's to me, it's not, it's not in service of the life we're all saying that we want. So we're saying we want one thing and we're behaving another. That's indicative of cognitive dissonance that says we're thinking we think something, but we have a different belief. So we're acting in conflict of our own proposed best interest. What we think we want to be doing, we hold some other belief and we need to address those things. Like, we have to. Um, or, or we continue to create the world that we're a part of. And the biggest message that I've gotten over the past year from like literally all the tarot readings, all the learning I have been doing, all the the kind of messages I feel like have been meant for me are centered around responsibility. We have to take responsibility for the world. You know, we have to act as if we matter. And if we are the world, we have to act as if the world matters. This is not just, I mean, you know, we don't know of any other life like ours. I'm not saying that there's not. I'm just saying based on what we know of the cosmos, we are rare. We are special. We need to fucking act like it. So is our planet. You know? Yes, exactly. We ha went gone with the wolves. So I think that like energy moves through the human beings such as what you think and believe, the swords, that stirs everything up, right? Or what you believe stirs it all up. That's the thought life. That's what you speak into existence, etc. That energy makes you feel a kind of way. That's the cups. That's like your emotional state. And that amps up, you know, the vibration. And that vibration starts calling to the universe to match it, okay? And then we get we get the, the fire, we get the wands. Now that we have felt a certain way for a while, now we're starting to get physical energy built up and we're going to start doing things about it. And then we get the physical manifestation that happens in the earth, uh, the rule, the suit of the pentacles. You know, we get to see it in physical terms. So the world that we have is based on what we believe about the world. We have been taught some really shitty things. The truth is, what we consider a cult, but guess what? Everybody who runs the world knows this shit. That's why they've gotten the world to be the way that they want, because they understand this. The thing is, though, there's way more of us. So if we understand and we actually start putting this into practice, no, we're not all going to be master world-shaping magicians overnight, but let me fucking tell you this. If we all are working on this together... Our vibrations will collectively rise at an exponential rate. And then our influence and our power is that of which we don't need to imagine how we change the world. The world will just fucking change. And I think that I, I can understand why you might say like, it's fucking bold of you to claim, you know, like that's some like woo woo shit. Well, I'm just daring you to give it a fucking try because that's the way we see all other behavior work out in life. Psychology backs this up. You know, we have been studying the brain long enough to know that what we believe is how we act. And how we act shapes how everything else happens and what shows up in front of us, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you, baby. Like, I, I don't give a shit about the woo-woo connotations. The truth is, is that, you know, I think our universe manifested in a pretty woo-woo way. I mean, like, science does a nice try at explaining how nothingness became something, but like, fuck, if that's not the most woo-woo thing you've ever heard, like, I don't know. I mean, that's why my name is Natural Magics. It's like everything is, everything is magical. How we got here is all a fucking, just wild. And how we create our lives is wild. It starts up here. We can literally just see things. 
We can literally just imagine the best of us. Like, what would you, like, if you imagined, if you did, if you avoided all the shit you're doing wrong right now and started just doing little things better every day, could you imagine what you would be like a year from now? Two years, three, five years from now? Like, just by avoiding the shit you know you shouldn't be doing right now and changing your perspective towards the shit you should be doing. Like literally just by paying attention to the right thing, by not paying attention to how you've been shit and where you've gone wrong, instead saying, where have I gone wrong? What could I have done right? You know, it's simple perspectives just like that. Like for me, inner child work was another really cool thing. Identifying with number one, time traveling to like little me who got traumatized as adult me who has all the understanding that I have now and giving them the right perspective, basically being the adult that I needed when I was a little kid. I would go back, you know, and heal stuff that way. I healed a lot of shit that way. Just time traveling as me and what I know now to those instances where I was hurt and I was like, you know, what they said is not true about you, you know, or they were just joking and I know that's hurtful and you don't have to take any of that to heart. That's not for you, you know, all this, like I would just come and tell little me those understandings. And then also once that little me had been much more healed and I recognized how much little me, little like Little Jen wanted to be a part of my life. Like play is so important to me and taking things lightly and just being like, it's all a game. That's such an important part of my life. And once I healed that version of me, I could then use that version of me to look at my shadow like a, like a curious kid and like a scientific kid. Like, cause that's how we are kind of naturally. Obviously things can scare us. But I just, I I had that kind of just imagination of like a really naive kid who's just super fucking curious because I kind of identify that way. I'm just like, well, what's bad? I don't know bad. Like, just what is this? I want to look at it, you know? And so taking that approach to my shadow has helped me a lot because it's owning a part of me that was wounded, you know, and utilizing that energy to kind of bring an ease to the whole experience of dealing with the, the really rough shit that, you know, needs to be addressed in our lives. But yeah, guys, I mean, the way we look at the world really does indicate what we experience in the world. Yeah, I mean, like, here's another thing, though, wonder, like, you know, if if the kid is not ready to to deal with the shadow, I mean, like, that's just, you got to know yourself. And in, in, if I, if that were me, I would be constructing a servitor to like help me walk through that. So what a servitor is, is again, so if you can imagine a highly idealized version of yourself, you can, I like idealize and imagine this perfect protector that lives inside of you and it can look any way that you want it to, you know, like just, but having that ultimate There is no one who could fuck with you while I'm here energy. And you go through a visualization process where that guy shows up and walks hand in hand with your younger self. Or maybe you don't need your younger self there. That's totally, that's totally real, you know? And that's where I think playing with your visualization practice is so helpful because, you know, if you don't go into it with the mindset of I've got to figure out what makes me want to stay here and do this, you know, and I don't think you have to do it long, long term every day. But if you can do it 10 minutes before you go to sleep, like you're really tapping in to a highly suggestible time of your day, you know. So if you're implanting this kind of scene where in the astral exists this perfect protector who comes to your aid, comes to your side, comes to be your bannerman anytime you need to go do some intensive shadow work, whether it's, you know, the you now version of you that needs to do that shadow work, or maybe it's you, maybe you need to time travel to the wisest version of you because you don't feel capable right now. That's the beautiful thing about visualization. We don't have, we can't, we can go to more than just the past. We can project ideal futures. Do you know what I mean? Um, So, yeah, it's about work. Like, honestly, 
when you want to talk about magic and like how the practice actually works, it's, it's a lot of investigating yourself and trying things out in your mind, seeing what works for you, seeing what makes you feel empowered, seeing what makes you feel, you know, safe and happy. And like, you actually are confronting things and dealing with it. That's the whole game though. The whole game is to go and confront the thing you don't want to confront because in, in, in that situation, that is where our freedom will lie because we can't, because if we, if we skirt off dealing with the inner beast, you know, that inner shadow demon, if we put it off, it's going to come up out of our control. Like it will actually behave as like a demon possessing us, you know, and it'll take over. You would much rather face it of your own volition. And I think that the world rewards us greatly when we face things on our own volition, when we take up responsibility on our own without being provoked, without being told, when we're just like, yo, this is an issue in my life. I'm going to look into this. I'm going to address this. I'm going to do the uncomfortable shit that is necessary for me to course correct this situation. Exactly. You know, confronting fears does like make you, you know, step out of your comfort zone. But the beautiful thing is everything that you want is outside of your comfort zone. The courage, the, 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 the confidence to continue to move forth as a conscious creator. It comes from leaving secure, like your proposed security, your proposed comfort zone. It's all out there beyond that point. So, you know, that's what I mean when uh, I quote Terrence McKenna, like when he said that nature loves courage. It's like when you show up and you face you face the unknown, you face the, the, you know, the dragon and you face your true self and you face what you truly want. The universe moves in support of, of that, which is needed to, to continue to progress you because you're looking in the right direction. You're looking towards, you know, the ultimate blueprint of yourself. So I think that the universe is in support of that because the only thing that we see, like, for me, I think the desire of the universe is simply to evolve because that's what we're doing. That's what the expression continuously shows us. We're not in a, you know, slowed down universe. In fact, the expansion is speeding up. Our universe has not stopped moving since, you know, the big bang. Um, and I only put that in air quotes. It's not that I don't believe it happened. I'm just saying it's, it's a specific name for a, an event we actually don't know how to talk about. So that's all I'm saying. That's all the only reason I'm putting it in quotes like that, you know, cause every other like culture has like a creation story. I would say that is the logical creation story, but it still has a big ass hole. It's like, where the fuck did it come from? You know? Um, Again, that's why I have no problem saying I fucking believe in magic. We're all here and that's magic. Like that's the only evidence that I need that the world is full of magic. All right, you guys, I think that's it for this morning. Um, thank you all so much for being here and holding space and being open and listening. Um, I'm catching up with a lot of stuff. This weekend was kind of an unexpected energy for me personally. I needed to confront some stuff and, uh, yeah, I, it's all good. It's all like where I should be and I'm very happy that it happened, but I do have some catching up to do with work. So just know that I'm in the thick of it. I'm going to be working my booty off the next two days, hopefully to get me all caught up with shipments and, on my schedule and everything. So, but anyway, I love you all. I hope you have a beautiful week. Um, I will see you soon. Yeah. <laughs>